Yeah, to check out more episodes of the Rap Radar Podcast, what they got to do, B-Dot? It's easy. Sign up at title.com backslash on air for your three-month complimentary membership. Yeah, man, you'll get access to over 48 million songs, tons of videos, exclusive concert live streams, and so much more, man. Yep. What's the address again, B-Dot? Title.com backslash on air. Yeah. Yeah, Rap Radar Podcast, Elliot Wilson. It's B-Dot. B-Dot, where you at, baby? I'm in L.A., man. <laughs> but you couldn't miss this. You hear that laugh, man? Yeah. We got the legend Mason Beffa up in here, man. Yeah, Mace, what up, up baby? Woo-hoo. Is this Mace from Harlem World? Uh, <laughs> is this B-Dot? Yeah. You know, I made yeah. a lot of money with the dots. D-Dot, B-Dot. <laughs> Anything with a dot in it, I make a lot of money with that. The publishing looks right, right? Yeah. D.S. Levy, the M. Beffa. good. This is going to be great. Thank you, Bass, for doing this, I brother. wore my frames because I came to speak to Elliot, you know? I'm saying. I had to look intelligent a little bit. You told you me know? the label's calling. We're also doing this super early for people watching. Like, you got to be yeah. like, I'm doing a morning show and shit. Hey, only for right. Beffa. Only for Beffa that we do this. <laughs> I feel like Esco up here right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like you set this up because you're going to spend a day going up to these labels and picking up a big bag hey. at the end of the day, man. Is that what's going on? Because you told me with the Oracle, like... Yeah. All of a sudden, these labels was just blowing up your phone, right? Yeah, and it was amazing because I, I, I didn't expect that. I wasn't doing it for that. I was yeah. just doing it to light a flame, you know, or to address some things, but I knew it would light a flame in hip-hop. Yeah. Because mm. sometimes when somebody just come from left field, it stir everybody up and send them back to the booth to really rap. No, but it's interesting. Feel- so, I'm sorry. Sorry, you- but that's interesting because sometimes I feel like people feel like you know, do this do this records in a sense work in this work work in this uh, space in this year. But yeah, to me it's to me it's more than just a diss record at the end of the day, right? I no, mean, for me it wasn't a diss record. It was a response. It was just like my stance or where I'm at. Yeah, mm. yeah. So for me, that's what it was. Yeah, I mean, I watched the sit down with Angie, and I think what what I came away off to is like not only not only did you have issues with what Cam said though. At the end of the day, it also is, it makes you have to address your legacy, right? Yeah, and how in a narrative in a narrative, narrative of your of whole how career, you, how you look at me and how you approach me. I want to mm. change the way people approach me. Absolutely, like, that is not the tree you want to fall on you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like it was a reminder, Mace, for people that you know forgot that you might have been getting busy on the mic? Yeah, I mean. Cause I've been I've been nice as long as anybody been nice. Like I grew right. up listening to Nas. Nas was my biggest inspiration. Yeah, maybe you should say that. Growing up, you know, and um, Method Man, LL. So I'm a mixture of all of that. So anything urban and gutter, I'm used to it. It's just I I look better sometimes dressed up, and they confuse <laughs> that yeah. with can he really go? And I was always taught to be more fearful of the quiet one. Because the mm. quiet one is the one you need to watch, not the loud people. Yeah. And you said you was murdering Ma- and Diddy made yeah, you pretty. Yeah, Diddy, when I got the bad boy, it was Puff idea to make me a clean artist because he said, I already got Black Rob, he's gutter. I already got Biggie, he's super gutter. You know, recipes notorious. Best rapper ever lived. Mm. We're going to get to that bad boy top five MC <laughs> yeah. list to beat our stern <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> You saw that, right? And I'll, I'll tell you, I'll jump out there and tell you. I put myself second, but I know people will put Kiss second, you know, and I got Kiss in my top five, but, you know, just out of my own personal as being a man. Yeah, B Dot, can you explain how you yeah. stirred this up on the internet? You saw it yesterday, yeah. right? Like B Dot's out here just stirring things up. Even Styles put a freestyle out last night. <laughs> and and oh, and let me forget, let me let me come back a little bit. SP, I think sometimes people get so focused on kids that they forget about oh, the ghost. The gangsta and the gentleman, baby. Right. SP is like, you know, he's one of those guys my favorite too, you know, because yeah. he always comes with that same approach. He's been the same way for all the years I known him, you yep. know. So shout out to LOX, shout outs to Rough Riders, because before I got signed with Bad Boy, LOX took me in. I was a part of LOX. I felt like I used to go to Yonkers every day, rap with them yeah. and stuff like that. And that story hardly ever get told. That's how you got some of the early stuff with me and the locks with mm-hmm. vacant mm-hmm. lot and stuff like that. So so D and Y they embraced you and Y embraced too. me, put mm-hmm. clothes on my back. And I'm I'm just in a real humble space where you tell the truth and you just 
honor those who who paved the way for you. But is it right. frustrating, like when B dot says you're a top five in that, and then sometimes because you know we'll get to how you pretty much had to carry the label when when Big passed. Yeah, but when like, Big died, I carried that label. I I kept the lights on. It was my <laughs> pen. It was my it was my thoughts. And Puff would go to the parties, and Puff had all the baddies, you know. <laughs> and Puff would just leave me in the studio because he trusted me and D dot. And D dot, mm-hmm. shout out to D dot. I don't think he get enough credit. D dot was the one. Mace, do that line over. Mace, nah, Mace, you too hard, soften it up. You too soft, harden it up. You know, he was just always he. D dot was the invisible. The coach almost right. Phil Jackson. Like a lot of times, people get puffed the credit, but D dot in that studio mm-hmm. was the guy in the studio every night. He would let he would listen to my records. He would go in there. He's like, you think you spit something? And he'd go let me listen to, can I live to my last day? Get money. <laughs> you know, every time I thought I had a hit, he'll take me in the A room and I hear Biggie song. And I was like, man, I got to come up with something again. This, And yeah, then yeah. I come up with something. Because you knew you could rap. But yeah, I thought I had something songs. crazy. Right. And then the next night, Biggie come in three in the morning and lay hypnotized. And I thought I had something would feel so good. So every time I would come up with something, Biggie, I would do the daytime. Biggie would have a studio at nighttime. Mm. And it was just crazy. Was there a lot of pressure to put the company on your back after Big passed away? Um, no, not really, because, you know, growing up, you look for that moment where you get the opportunity. The numbers call, like sports. Almost. Yeah, like yeah. you get the opportunity to show. Like, this is my time to show. I'm really as good as anybody else. And at first, when I started writing with, with, for Puff, it was an experiment because those were most of the songs. If you ask Kuda, a lot of the songs that Puff put out originally, those right. first three or two singles, they were a part of my demo. So can't nobody mm. hold me down. Yeah, which had to, you got and to, and, and, and I, I would pick a different beat, and then Puff would say, "No, don't do this beat," because I had can't nobody hold me down to. To the um original, been around yeah. the world and ah yeah yeah, mm-hmm. the Lisa original Stansfield. beat of that, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then Puff would pick a different beat, but that was it was pretty much my concept. And then you oh, wow. you also said you patterned a style that then it gave Puff the freedom to sort of emulate that style a little bit, or at yeah. least draw inspiration from it to come up with his vocal persona because he became, yeah, because he became an artist. He became an artist, and people sometimes they 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 don't give credit where credit is due, and I'm okay with that. But if you think about how Puff sound with um, what was the guy he was rapping nah, with nah, first? Ding, ding, the, the Puff that. Daddy, I, that's <laughs> third eye, totally third different. Third eye, yeah. You know that's totally different, and that guy was dope too. Yeah, but you all bring the swag out. Yeah, the, the swag. The I brought the swag, confidence. the bad boy. Yeah. But what's crazy is that in 1997, you know. Big had life after death, then Puff comes, then you come, right? Yeah. Do you think Puff was gonna blow up as big as he was? Um, at first. I knew Puff had the platform, and I knew I had the lyrics. So you needed both. I wouldn't be who I am without Puff, and he wouldn't have been who he was without me. Yeah. Mm. So it's, it's equal. I had the intellectual property, which was the rap. He had the money and the, the marketing, and we had an amazing marketing team. You know, shout out to everybody at Arista and... And all those people, they loved me from the first day they saw me. Clyde Davis loved me from the first day he saw me. Yeah. He always said, he always told me when I would get into Mason and Betha, he said, nobody want to see Clark Kent. People want to <laughs> see Superman. <laughs> and that's what I tapped into a few weeks, a few, a few yeah, days ago. Yeah, he said, they, yeah. they don't, they don't want to see Mason and Betha. They want to yeah. see Mace. They want to see yeah. murder. That's what they want to see. Yeah. Whoever Mason and Betha is. Save that for your your normal life. Because you always is more. You was an entertainer too. Yeah. At the end of the day. Yeah. So I always remember that because when first day we had the video, feel so good, and I was on the set by myself. In Vegas and all in that. In Vegas, right? and we had already did all this stuff for Puff. It was so crazy, and nobody showed up to my video. So I'm like, where's everybody at? They're like, we're gonna we're gonna send the locks to your video. I said, send the locks. I want more than just the locks, but I love the locks. Yeah, yeah. And then I see Chris Tucker, and we got on these shiny suits. We got on the silver suits. I said, I'm not putting that on. I already did that with Puff. I want to be myself so on you this. Did more one. money, more problems. Before, yeah, yeah. So I, I kind of fought that. And then when I was in the in the trailer, Clyde Davis would say, "Hey, remember what I told you? Nobody want to see Clark Kent." 
put the mm. Superman suit yeah. on. <laughs> I, literally, literally. And I put the I put the outfit on. He was like, "It's gonna be shiny, not not um Clyde Davis, but somebody else. It's gonna be shiny. So we need to put makeup on your face and all this stuff." I was like, "Man, they gonna have me out here like Mars Day." You know, I was so yeah, yeah. I was so upset. This but this is your I, first look for your your project. Yeah, your but then when look. I saw it, I was like, "This is gonna be crazy." So I thank all of those June Ambrose. Hype Williams, Paul Hunter, all those people that played an amazing role in taking me to the level that I've come to. So it was the image you, you learned to embrace. At the yeah, end it was an image I had to learn to embrace. Because even when I did Only You, and I'm in the studio and I got all my childhood friends, they're like, man, you sound like LL. You don't sound like Comment murder. Come if you want to. Come <laughs> right. if you want to. But, but speaking of Only You, why was Big not in the video? Big was in the video. He was in the video for only you. What was in it? Mm-hmm. I didn't see yeah. Okay. yeah, he had on the blue polo with the navy blue Yankee yeah. hat. But that okay, okay. but that was literally the first verse you kicked for Puff, right? So you was on like Jack yeah. the Rapper going hum if you want to, come if you want to. Like and then he was and like, it was he he told me when I get to New York, don't talk to anybody. Just come and be on Bad Boy. But you know, we took another meeting. Yeah. And I <laughs> and I went to speak with Heavy D at Uptown. Mm. God bless his soul. You know, get a little and, leverage. And Heavy D <laughs> said, um, I'll give you a hundred thousand up front if you'll grow an afro and be a part of Pete Rock and CL Smooth. In wow. what sense? How would you be a part of Pete Rock and CL Smooth? I guess he was gonna <laughs> add me to the group. Wow. Jesus wow. Christ. I don't know I didn't that. Know that. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, you know, I saved something for rap radar, yeah. you know. <laughs> You gotta save something for Rap Radar, all right? No, but to think it back, B that just made me think though. Why why do you think it went from Life After Death? It didn't go straight to Harlem Well, Why was No Way Out necessary? Was it almost because the I'll Be Missing You record took off and then the focus changed? Like, or were you ready to follow um, up that fast? Or Puff wanted to experiment. And shout out to Puff. He did an amazing job. Even to this day. I think sometimes I used to get in my feelings about things that Puff didn't do or he didn't you know, bring to the table for me when it's time to do something for me. But I appreciate it when I look at it from a different hindsight well, time, because I understand yeah. that it made me a monster. Do mm. you think he used it as motivation? <laughs> that, he, that he wanted to keep you... I think the way Puff sets up deals will cause you to be a monster because you got to work double hard to get yours. Yeah. But you also you... managed by Magic Johnson at one time. Did mm-hmm. him and Puff have to deal with each other? Um... Not really, because I, I met Magic Johnson, and he was trying to get me into the Starbucks deals and things like that. Yeah, this is but like that 99, was, right? Yeah, that was on my way. Excellent. Shout out to right. Magic, too, you know. I, just, I met a lot of amazing people on this journey and still continue. I feel like I always meet the best people. Yeah, You think you just attract that? Yeah, I think my energy just attract good. Yeah. Mm. And bad just somehow never make it to me. I'm always at the right place at the right time. And I... And I don't even say that to sound cocky, but yeah. sometimes I, I I just feel extremely blessed. I'm always at the right place at the right time. I'm always leaving the wrong places at the right time. Mm. Mm. You just, you right. just sense something. Yeah, like, and there's always been something I had. I never knew what it was. I just, it always was instilled in me. So you'll see me exiting and then you'll see certain things that happen, like with Sean and them. I always think, well, I would have been in that car. Mm. You get mm. what I'm saying? Yeah. So then my exit was a, a great idea. Your, um, your exit was a huge thing that I think still somewhat defines you and not only also, not always in a positive way, right? Mm-hmm. Because here's a guy who's leaving the game and at he's the serious about it, it, the height yeah. of it. Like And I never I never exited to be anything. I just wanted to redefine myself and also find myself. Cause I felt like I, I had a lot of money, but I didn't know who I was. I didn't know really what I wanted to do, but I knew I had to do something other than just hip hop. I felt like I had more gifts than just hip hop, and I learned that I do have many more gifts other than hip hop. I learned by um, studying things in the faith and things like that, yeah. that I'm mm. as gifted, if not more at that, than hip hop. Mm. And that mm. was just, that was surprising to me. The first time I ever went somewhere and did anything with in a youth. Or um, or like speaking of families, I end up being a all kind of things, marriage counselor, different things like yeah, that. Yeah. You would say, mm-hmm. "How can 
this guy who does hip hop have that much depth to him, but it was just something that was given to me, and I and I refused to just keep running away from it. So why did you think so? All of what was wildly successful. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted to get your mentality going into making that second album because the second album is a little more darker, and yeah. it seems like you're wrestling and, with some of the issues exactly. that, that you ended up facing. And with double, double up and double up. I found myself drifting from my square. Mm -hmm. I wasn't my happy self. I wasn't the person that. That was like, oh, bubbly and all this. I was more looking at it like, here I am at war with childhood friends, people I grew up with, people I looked up to. Like, in a sense, I used to like be like, oh, Jay Z's here. You get what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. even that was kind of difficult for me because when you're dissed by somebody you looked up to, you're like, I thought this guy was dope, <laughs> but now he's taking mm -hmm. shots at you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's a weird space. It's like, yeah. It's like now you're gunning with, with people you looked up to. It would be like me beefing with Nas. I got so much from Nas, I would feel weird in a in a match with Nas. Because mm. when I first started rapping, he inspired me to rap. You know, mm -hmm. We used to be on mm. the corner. Everybody was on Big L. I love Big L, but Nas was more, was more of my yeah. style. So even when Nas had the waves with the fade, all I did was grow the dark season and get the waves. So I like to get credit where credit is <laughs> no, due. You know, yeah. sometimes right. people blow up and try to act like they came up with all this. And, and I then, think people would be surprised to hear you give credit in that sense. Yeah, that and and a lot of a lot of my delivery came from Method Man. Like I used to love I'd be on the beat, the Rizza, the Razor hit me with the maid. He had like this party bounce. I was like, yo, what if I take that and kind of put bars to it and mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. do some different things. Jump. And then I said I got from LL how to make the girl records and things like that. So when you're looking at me, you're looking at a mixture of all those things. Yeah. Right. And how did you I, and MOP and Onyx? But how did you manage to soldier on during that time? Because like in '97, Bloodshed had passed away like mm -hmm. seven days before Big had died. Yeah. Like how did you you know manage to go through that? I mean, and at that point, it was it was so much going on. I think. Looking back, it was too much for where I was in a maturity state. It mm. was it was a lot for me there, but musically, it began to make me grow up as a man. Mm. Mm. Just the loss right. of life, or just the circumstances yeah, the, the changing. Understanding that you could be here today and be gone tomorrow. So yeah. whatever yeah. you could do today, you better do it. So that's why I was jumping on every record, doing everything, and I learned that from Tupac too. Yeah, he just. I love that about Pac. I, I, if I could be any type of artist, I, I would want to be like something like that. Like yeah. not from the aggression and and disrespectful point, but he was so passionate about what he believed, what he said. And I see people like J. Cole and people like that yeah. tapping into that, and I think that's commendable. Yeah, mm -hmm. you big him up now. You you had a little mm -hmm. issue before though. You said yeah, you know, I, put I, hands on him. It was a it was a misunderstanding. <laughs> yeah. You know, I like I like to keep it where it is. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if I'm <laughs> if I'm wrong as a man, then I apologize as a man. That's Absolutely. what I try to do. Yeah. I try to apologize public publicly because I disrespected them publicly. Yeah. I don't think yeah. you disrespect people publicly and try to apologize private. Yeah, I remember you saying that. So going back to double up though, did you feel like you were starting to lose the love for it while you were recording the album? I, I felt like I wasn't being appreciated and I only like to go where I'm celebrated. So that's why when people be like, Mace not coming around, he's going to leave again. I only like to be where I'm celebrated. If I'm not celebrated, then I'm not going there. If you don't like the energy, if you don't feel like yeah, it's like reciprocated. I, you see how I came in here? Yeah. I was I was vibrant about this. Yes, sir. I could feel you fool with me. I fool with you. Like I knew B dot. I'm like, this is gonna be crazy. Yeah. I'm there <laughs> with family. I'm there with yeah. intelligent minds. Sometimes yeah. it's yeah. hard to be a, of intellect with people that their their elevator don't go up to that floor. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like and, and they don't want to take the stairs. <laughs> and they don't and they don't want to go up. You know, so this is an easy conversation. I could I could do part three yeah. and four with you because I know you get certain things. We could have that conversation because yeah. I could we could bounce ideas. You could tell me things that you don't understand yeah. or you don't agree with, well, and I would yeah. and I wouldn't take nothing by it because I know you're coming from a. Yeah. Non-biased place. But I think it was always, I remember it being in media at the time when you retired, like the first thing was heard that 
the deaths of Pac and Biggie impacted you. And that was part yeah. of it. Like it made you sort of lose your love of this or also just feel like you wasn't necessarily protected or like, you know, yeah, I, comfortable. I, I, I felt like if if this could happen to Biggie, worse could happen to me. Mm. Is that yeah. that's fair to say. If that what could about- happen to him, then what could happen to me? And I noticed that when things did happen, I watched everybody operate a little differently. And at first, I didn't know what was going on. I was 19, 20. I didn't know what was going on. But after I kind of figured out what was going on. Even today, I said, nah, I can't put myself in this position. Mm. Yeah. Did but, you have that same kind of sentiment when Big L passed? Exactly. Now, you got to remember... You bringing up some really key things, B Dot. You did your homework. <laughs> no, for That's real, for real. That's what he does. So you got to think about it. I'm doing, I'm doing rap. I blow up instantly. Yeah. I got the whole neighborhood looking for me for everything. For I'm, a superstar, out of yeah. Home. I'm still a yeah. kid. I'm still a kid at this point. And you got one of your best friends died in, in bloodshed. You got another friend die over here over something else. You got um, you got Biggie die, then you got Big L die. Is death all around me? Whether mm. it's childhood, whether it's people I used to rap with, whether it's mentors, and if, it's no way you can have three to four deaths around you and it not change you. Mm. Right. Like you would have to be really, really shallow and really, really numb for that not to, sh- to change you. And people say, "Oh, you're scared." No, I'm not scared. That's common sense. If if Big L die, who's a rapper, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Biggie dies, who's a rapper. Um, Bloodshed dies, who's also a rapper. Tupac dies, that's a rapper. You don't see any correlation yeah. in that, right? <laughs> like so, yeah. at this time, that's why you're getting that. You you started getting a darker sense from me because I start paying attention to yeah. that. And I also changed my my surroundings. Like some of the people I let come around me, I should have never let be around me. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I was gonna say like that's what the accusation I think that Cam always puts out that you were caught up in some street stuff with you hear names like Baby 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 Maine and yeah. Pop Lottie and stuff like. But then you no, say that, that that I said Lottie was my friend and and per the request of his mom, she asked me as a grieving mom, don't keep talking about that because it's hard for my son. She said, it's hard for our son to rest and I can't really go against that request. Yeah. You know, right. but but what I would say in the sense of this is that um, it wasn't nothing really I had to do with it. That's what I would say. Yeah, But I definitely would, would like to let a grieving mom have that peace because for 20 years she haven't had that peace. Yeah. Um, I want to uh, talk about um, Huddy Six, Huddy Combs. Um, yeah. Cam mentioned in an interview with Ange, you know, about y'all mm-hmm. guys' relationship. And when he passed, he mentioned that you guys, you did, that you didn't go to the funeral. I was wondering what was the reason behind that? Um, I didn't go to anybody's funeral, really. That's not oh, something wow. that, that's not something that I do. Like, oh, wow. my understanding of that is kind of different. I went to Biggs. Funeral. Did you see me at the Biggs funeral? Yeah, I saw the picture. Mm-hmm. You saw the picture? That's not something I do well with. And I, I have to respect my mental space and my mental capacity and be honest with myself of the way my brain is wired. It's not It's not good for me to see stuff like that because I see it so often, like growing up, just so you have some childhood history of me. When I was about 13 or 14, a lot of my friends... Um, got killed. My mother sent me down to Jacksonville. That's what Cam was talking about yeah. for like six months, and it did something to me mentally. Where it it, it kind of changed me, made me numb. Where people get this soft, like nonchalant mm. persona from. Mm. When I went to, and it took me a while to get over that. It took me like probably like three years from that one aspect. So when I went to the front of the with Big. It was like it restarted all of that. So mm-hmm. then, when it came time for other funerals and well, things L, like that, these other people I think I went to Big L and it sent me into a real dark space. Mm-hmm. That's where you got double up from. Yeah. So for me, I have to respect who I am as a person, my strengths and my weaknesses, 
and that's not something good for me mentally to yeah. take part in. So unless it's like a life celebration, I could go mm-hmm. to that, but where it's going to be a lot of grieving and crying, that doesn't work well for me. So how do I help people that's grieving? I try to figure out other ways I can help because that's not what works for me. Mm-hmm. You understand that? Yeah. And somebody will say, how are you not going to go to your childhood friend's you know, funeral? It's a hard thing to do, but if it's going to send me into a different space, then that's not yeah. something I should do. And then there's other times when I would go to a funeral. Another aspect of it is this. If I go to a funeral and it could lead to my funeral, should I go? Mm. Yeah. So I want to give you mm-hmm. both sides, yeah. not just use mm-hmm. a psychological excuse. Also, if I'm going to go to a funeral and I know it's going to be loaded with people that f- clearly feel this way, mm-hmm. why would I be sitting in the audience unprotected in a mob of people that all feel may share this same view of me? Mm. That wouldn't be smart, would it? No. So you feel like so when you got successful, you felt like there started to be tension within Harlem and certain people weren't messing with you or you felt I I turned on you? I felt like, and when I first started, it was a surprise. Nobody expected me to blow. Mm. It's definitely not that fast. Yeah. Nobody helped me. So therefore, when I blew up, everybody would feel a way because this is the guy that we didn't help. Yeah, you were saying Big L reached out to Cam to be on his record. No one ever reached out to Nobody you. ever so. put me on anything. So then if you didn't put me on anything and then I skyrocket, you know I got a chip on my shoulder. So now I'm looking at it like everybody needs me and I still try to help. I put five of my friends, I gave Call five of world. my friends a deal. Only I think two or maybe three of them were rappers. The rest of them was just my friends. The guy yeah. Sugar J, I put him in the group. He didn't even rap. Mm. I just was trying to make a way for everybody from different areas of Harlem to make some money. So I took a guy from Uptown. I took a guy from the East Side. I took a guy from um, St. Nick Projects. Mm-hmm. Took Mino's a guy. in there somewhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> Mino is 29th Street. <laughs> Blink was from the East Side, yeah. AK. Um, Stace was my sister. Yes. Who helped put um, you on? Got your tape to Cool yeah. to Love. Who got you on with Puff, right? Yeah, Huddy was from Delano, 42nd, 41st, 40th. So and Cardan was from St. Nick. Cardan, wow. So, oh, yeah. I, so that was my he way. He had his own deal too. He got his own deal. That too. was my way to create outlets for every part of Harlem I could think about. That was my understanding. Yeah. So if I help Blink, he's now responsible to help AK. If I help Mino, Mino is now responsible to help 29th Street. If I help Huddy, Huddy is now responsible to help 40 or 41st Drew Hamilton. Um, mm-hmm. If I help Loon, Loon is responsible to help 45th Street. And therefore, you, you, mm-hmm. are you getting yeah, it? Yeah, of course. Right. So now I'm going to help my sister because she's the one that's really started it all. She was Baby the sense. one that had my tape and gave it to Kuda, which led to me meeting Puff, which led to all of this Harlem stuff you're getting. Yeah. Right. So therefore, that was my way to give back to everybody. And then when I helped Sugar J, he was just there. Right. So it what's was your like, relationship? Go ahead. I was say, wait. What's your relationship like with McGruff these days? Um, I tried. I tried to reach out through different people because I don't have a direct line on them. But that was also one of my favorite artists growing up. A guy that I feel like if I could do it all over again. That would be one of the guys that I would really, really help. Because he was the guy, when he had a deal, looked out for me. Mm. He was the guy that was like, oh, yeah, put, what was the, he was on a song the Mace on murder. This. It was, was me yeah. and Big L and Gruff. Yeah. Right. So, you know, shout out to Gruff and hit me up, DM me. Yeah. I got something for <laughs> you. And you did help Cam by bringing Cam to Biggie, right? That's how Biggie got mm-hmm. on with, uh, that's how Cam got on with entertainment. Yeah, I sent, I, I brought Cam to Biggie's house. And and Big was in the bed. I said, Big, you need to listen to this guy. So I, I really pushed the envelope for Cam. And that's why, you know, sometimes I'm I'm more, I wouldn't say disappointed, but that would be the only word I could think of at this time. I think sometimes you just don't go against people who who did something for you at a time when you couldn't do it for yourself. 
Right. And not that he wouldn't have got on and got a deal on his own. I'm not taking credit like that. I'm just saying, but I did do something. Yeah, and then why why weren't you cut? Why weren't you a, get part of that deal in some sense? You said you didn't even get a finder's fee. Like, what was that decision that way? Was it something with you and on at the time or something? Like, why I, was it? I just didn't need it. I didn't need it. And when I when I asked for, you know, to be paid for a video, at Horse that point, carriage. yeah, yeah. at right. that point, I needed it. So mm. if I'm doing work, I need to be paid for my work. If I'm gonna be doing free stuff for you. It should be okay if I get you a deal. If I if I do songs with you, I I run through a whole video with you. I'm not even part of the video. Oh, three five seven. Three five seven. Yeah, I'm running through the train station, and I loved it because it's a good video, it was man. like it was like. <laughs> no, I'm saying. Sorry, be that. I, I I ran through the video with him for a whole day, you know, running through train stations and all of this. So I'm saying at some point it's it should be okay if if on this next thing I get you paid. You do me the favor back. Oh, well, well, take care of me on this one. Yeah, I gave you I gave you the solid on your look. Yeah. 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 And you know, I think people looking back, we probably all could have done it differently. Yeah. I don't hold him a hundred percent responsible. There's certain ways I probably could have handled it. Because I remember even at the time, I think I had, was at the source at the time. It was a big deal in that moment that you didn't do it. It was instantly a thing that became this controversial thing. Yeah. Like it's, people bug out now, like why twenty years later is that the source of the thing? But at the end of the day, that it is. was a big moment. I think to this happened. day, yeah. that's still the the issue. Yeah, because like certain things I said, even in an interview with Angie, there's certain things Puff did that that hurt me as a person. Of when course. you can't say that something hurt you, and you don't deal with that hurt, all it's going to turn you into is trying to hurt somebody else. Mm-hmm. When really, just address it. I like that about Drake. He's vulnerable in different states that, that causes him to, to self-reflect. Hmm. I had to look and say there's certain things Puff did that hurt me as a person. So then when we talked, me and Puff had this, this amazing conversation. I wish I had it recorded where I told him my real heart. I told him how I felt when you know, I was going through certain things and he was on songs with people that were trying to do stuff to me physically. I, and so you know, I, I got into that with him and let him know how I felt about that. And he said, you never, I never knew this. So a lot of times it just takes that conversation. And then in that conversation, he could say, okay, like there was times when, when Puff went out and did something with, whether it was Dre and Snoop and people would be like, Mace didn't come out. Like, cause to me, that, that hurt That's me the as a person. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like I fooled with Snoop, but that, that wouldn't have been something at that point for me to do. I used to feel like if I go out there with them, I'm disrespecting big. Mm. And it mm. took me a while to understand, no, people have moved on. And if everybody, I had to say, if everybody else is okay with this, I still have to be true to how I think. Yeah. Do you think the other aspect of it, and I think it was more so, I think when when Jimmy jumped in it and you guys had your issues that mm-hmm. it almost they felt like you left them and they, they, like they ended up building diplomats, right? And became self-sufficient, but... It's almost like, and that's to be commended. Yeah, it was almost like did they feel like you had abandoned them in a sense, and that they had to create this on their own, and, and that, grew resentful and, of and, you not being there. And that's to be commended. I think they should have only been resentful if they failed. If I moved out the way and you got that much success, then that was what that was God's plan, mm. and that was supposed to happen. Sometimes people have to move out the way so you could be who you need to be. Because if I was there, who's to say there would be a diplomat? Who would, who's to say mm-hmm. everybody wouldn't be on the Harlem world? Like to me, when I when I think of Cam and I think of Jim and all of them, the most impressive thing I ever seen Cam do was Dipset. Mm. You know, so I wasn't listening to music, but when I went back and listened, I was like, this song was crazy. Um, mm-hmm. Jewels was crazy on this, yep. you know. That he built this powerful movement. <laughs> exactly. Literally, like they said it was a powerful <laughs> movement and they really built a powerful exactly. movement. Exactly. But who's to say with Mace, with all his color and all of his um, good vibes, you couldn't have gotten Dipset out of that. Mm-hmm. So me leaving should be clapping. You should be mm-hmm. clapping for that because without that, who's to say you would have gotten that? Mm-hmm. And then people like Jewels that rose to the forefront. Yeah. Amazing lyricists, you know? Yeah. But it took me to move 
for that to happen. So I, I think that's like a gift and a curse. Mm-hmm. And you have to look at it that way. Don't really be resentful of that because if he didn't move, you wouldn't have had the whole town to do dip set. Yeah. Mm. And, why do you think? Why but do you think, again, yeah. I applaud what they did with. Yeah, Dipset. I think people people wonder, yeah. wonder what you felt of yeah. the diplomat movement. Like even makes respect when I first respect when happened. I first saw it, when I first saw the the logo, I was impressed. Mm. I was like, oh, he gets it. You get what I'm saying? Something that big and something that iconic. And again, bringing jewels to the forefront Yeah, mm. <laughs> was another genius move because you right. always recreate yourself with new people and new energy. Mm-hmm. Right. So, you know, I always knew him and Jim to be together, but it was jewels. It really yeah. stood out. Yeah. Yeah. And then, we- then J.R. Ryder came. Then forty cow, to, you know, because mm-hmm. after you yeah. get one going, everybody <laughs> just everybody just comes, you know. And I no, and I the mean, way they do, the way they join, all, and shout outs to all of them. It ain't, it ain't no issue. Yeah. And Cam making the move to Rockefeller and then making that successful. The, it's the I wasn't of that. happy mm-hmm. with that, but okay. that's not my business. Okay, why well, wasn't you happy with that? <laughs> it seems like those is always like also to go back though. It seems like there's always some type of issue with you and Dame Dash. Like, and he was the one with Children of the Corn who. Helped you guys in the beginning. Why do you think things have gone not right with him at times? And you say like, a lot of times you also feel like he planted the seed in Cam's mind to beef with you. In a sense, that's my that's my ultimate issue with with um, Dame. I feel like we had a lot of issues outside of music, whether it was different people, baby mothers, and stuff yeah, like that. You said the Arians and all that. Yeah, yeah. and. I don't want to get into all right, that. Got you. That's the past. Yeah, you know, <laughs> but it was it was. All the beefs people pretty much had with me could be linked back to some woman. But in all the player stuff that people say, I shouldn't be saying this. Let's just move on from it. Yeah. Let's just move yeah. on. No, but just I'm bigger than that. Yeah. But do right. but do you so that's why you didn't like that move with the, the Rockefeller over me. But you do respect the diplomat movement being built I came at the forefront. A hundred percent. Why right. do you think? So were you surprised that he brings up stuff like this and still goes back to the street stuff and like with a current mixtape went back and tapped you? Like, were you surprised that he's still bringing these type of things to the forefront? Um, no, I think once you once you kind of get away with someone once, twice, you're gonna do it a third time. Maybe mm-hmm. get away with it a third time. Yeah. You're gonna do it a fourth time. And you didn't think, like he, you didn't think people... he'd wake the beast up, as you said. You said the G in the mixtape, but he didn't woke the beast up. You were asleep. <laughs> like he he didn't <laughs> think he was he was gonna wake the. He didn't think you were gonna respond that way. Yeah, and he, I mean, I don't know, but I heard him say out of his own mouth, he's proud of me. He said, "I'm proud of him responding after." But he, it took him 15 years. That was how much. That was how much love I had. I had for him. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That I I didn't want to go in that space because I know. When I go in that space, I'm going all the way there. So I don't like to go there because when I go there, I'm going all the way there. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I, that wasn't a space that I was willing to go to because after you make the record, you got to be willing to do all the other stuff that goes with the record. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, right. and and defend yourself on the, on the other, other parts. Yeah. And I never wanted to put myself in that position, but I, I, I had to think about it and say, well, he's clearly... Yeah, will willing to do something to me. So at some point, I have to understand. Yeah, that's where it may go, and be okay with it because I'm gonna defend myself. Do you think the right. success of diplomats and the power of that is also, to a certain extent, diminished your legacy a little bit in comparison? And that that Cam no, gets a lot no, of props because no. of how he was. I think I think of, I think of um, how can I say it? I think Cam is dope. And his legacy is dope on the level it's on. And I think Mace is dope and even doper on the le- on the level I'm on. I don't I never saw me and Cam on the same level. Nobody that knows music here comes, here comes put us <laughs> on the same level. Now, if you're a street guy, you got Cam up here, right? Mm-hmm. If you're if you're a mainstream guy, you got Mace all the way up here. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. 
Like it, it depends. Or if you're a younger on, rap fan, you may have not connected you're a young, to you. If you're a younger rap fan and you never heard Mace, but if you go back and listen to Mace with Biggie, Murder Mace, and freestyle. Murder listen Mace. to Mace with Biggie. Biggie told you he listens to Mace. I think that's a hat off right there. Yes, sir. Eminem told you Mace is his one his favorite artist. Kanye told you. Mace is his favorite artist. So you and then you you hear Drake, he said, Well, Mace is the original of all a lot of the stuff we're doing. Mm-hmm. Right. You you don't get you don't touch that many people on those type of levels without being something. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying I'm, you know, past anybody and even with Cam, like I said, he's dope on his level for street rap for that. He's one, he's one of the best. For the movement he built on the cultural level. He's one of the best. But if you say mainstream or or can do it all rappers, then that's different. You get what I'm that's saying? A, and that's, that's and I'm trying uh, and I'm trying to appreciate what he does and let people know that don't diminish who I am. Of course, as me as a person, I'm gonna say I'm doper. Like I, I would be lying if I said I thought he was doper. Right. You know, I think if I was a street rapper and I stayed around a bunch of goons, I would be even doper as a street rapper. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's nobody because sometimes it's the it's the people you keep around you. If I kept a hundred certified street guys around me and only rapped about street stuff, I think I would be better than most of the guys who rap about street stuff. Because it's right. the energy you keep around you that now plays into your image. Mm-hmm. You don't ever have to catch a body. But if everybody around you is known for bodies, yeah, then people associate you as this top goon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and because of I choose to be around people that just have good energy. They're not with the smoke. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> yeah, they're In not 2017, with the smoke. Yeah. yeah, so now they saw so a person think, oh, Mace is super soft. No, Mace walks around with a lot of jewelry and things like that with mm-hmm. no security. I'm not, I think I'm, you know, mm-hmm. in my own Walking right. With your man. Your man right. Yeah, your I'm man. not here so, with a thousand people. I don't feel like I need to. Anything somebody could do for me, I could do for myself. Mm-hmm. But I'm not, I, I hope I never have to do that. I'm not on that type of time. But I'm not fearful. I couldn't be with bad boy in a time where you could lose your life and I'm riding shotgun with the person everybody wants his head and be soft. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I was here when I survived Tupac. I could survive the rappers of today. <laughs> right. That's what I you that's mentioned- what people don't remember. Like, no. We survived Tupac. Who right. is there today that we couldn't handle? Yeah, go ahead, Vida. Yeah. I'm sorry. I was gonna say, uh, Mace. You know, you mentioned a lot of the legends when that respect you and you know what you've done to the game. But mm-hmm. you know, for your own perspective, what do you think that you brought into the music game that was different? I brought so much to the game from look. If you just look at people who just started wearing waves, just the dark seas of waves. <laughs> we got we got his do rag on right now. We can go through the list of artists, two earrings, jerseys, um, fitted hats. Right? This is this is a lot. Like, <laughs> I mean, slowing up the rap so right. people can hear it. Rapping two words at a time. It was a lot of things that I brought to the game that people would never give me credit for. And I'm going to say this because I'm I'm only going to be myself. Even when I started rapping on Bad Boy, I saw how my flow changed other great rappers' flow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say any names because there's a bunch of mm-hmm. them that we hold as gods that all adjusted their flow to how I was flowing. If you go mm-hmm. listen to your greatest five rappers mm-hmm. before Mace came, <laughs> they were rapping differently. And you come and tell me about their singles and their songs after I drop, and you'll say, Mace even influenced them. 
Now, mm-hmm. nobody's going to go on the radio and say, Mace <laughs> influenced me, but it's like- But why it, is that? Because of the stigma of the retirement and all of a sudden you're a pastor and we don't see that coming? Like, yeah. let's go back to like, why? because I remember, I actually remember when you retired, the first thing I heard mm-hmm. was that you was going back to being kind of anonymous. You were going to go to college. I went to college. Clark University. You got your PhD, college. right, Mace? I got two doctorates. Wow. wow doctorates. Congratulations on that. Mm-hmm. But that you was, you know, going to go to college and, and, and lay low in that sense and just kind of figure out your Yeah, and when move. I went to college, it was crazy because I was trying to sit in class with other kids. <laughs> and, <laughs> and they were like, we're going to college Beth to up. get a job. <laughs> and you already got a job. And then your I, went to this, on. <laughs> yeah, I went to this public speaking class. That was one of the classes I had. And the lady said, there's a lot of people that can't talk. That make a lot of money, like rappers. <laughs> and I was in the class, and everybody started laughing. <laughs> and everybody started looking at me, and I'm thinking, wait a minute. So I said, Miss, why do you think rappers can't talk? She said, they break their syllables up. She, You know, mm. she told me a lot of things Technical. that I never thought about. And I said, that's actually how I speak, you know. So I took the criticism. It was r- really harsh. So then when it was time to do a paper or orientation... The first person she called up when it was time to do this speaking (laughs) was me. So I'm up there and I got to talk about, I think, Martin Luther King and the difference between Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Mm. So you have to go in and pick it. And I'm looking at this thing and everybody's like, what is he going to say about Martin Luther King (laughs) and Malcolm X? So I'm breaking it down the way I understand it. And she says, sit down. I said, sit down? She said, sit down. This is how you don't speak. Mm. And from that mm. point on, it made me work on how I speak in, in public. Like, And from there and taking different classes and people asking me about my change, it ended up turning into a church. It wasn't, mm. I didn't start mm. no church. I mm. didn't want to start no church. It, it just grew into that. Right. And from from taking those classes and learning how to speak. And I had no idea was going in that direction. Yeah, I was just trying right. to get myself centered as a person. When you started the same ministries, were you still writing raps on the side? Um, That's a publishing issue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, let me stop. Yeah. Um, well, just like for your own, you know, in your rhyme book or something. I, I had things that were already written that yeah. I... I, I did let a few people use and tap into, and it made oh, them wow. very successful. Oh, you would say, yeah, you had you had blessed some people. You were ghostwriting for yeah. certain things, passing some lyrics along. <laughs> so how did so? What was that transition like for you to become a pastor and like then lead a congregation? Like, do you remember the first time you got up and, and like led a group of people? And like, what was that transition like for you? When I started going, when I started going to church, I was an assistant. Of the pastor. Mm. I wasn't even trying to be a minister or nothing like that. My job was to take his robes and all the choir robes to the cleaners and get them clean. Wow. When I first started going to church, it was all like real old people, 60, 70. I was the only person in there that was under about probably like 40 or 50. When I started going there, I noticed that nobody knew me there, so I felt comfortable. Mm. I was learning from this pastor. He was really good, but nobody knew of him. And when I would take these things to the cleaners, people would look at us and be like, why is Mace carrying his luggage and his in his briefcase and all of these <laughs> things like that? And to make a long story short, when I started doing that, the more and more I went out with him, Somebody tipped them off to who I was, but that was like nine months to a year later. Mm. And it was too late. I had already learned everything pretty much because I would study under him and take his sermons and rewrite them and, and, you know, create a a study note from from his lessons. Mm. And I would take Mm. his study notes and talk about them to people in school. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how the church started. So I used to drive the church van you know, the little mm-hmm. window that you go like this and push out. And I remember it was so funny because it was a real old van. And one day I was driving it to go pick up this the students from the school and drive them to church. And I saw JD. 
and JD was coming <laughs> down the street. <laughs> and I put the seat all the way back. <laughs> <laughs> so JD wouldn't see me, <laughs> and it yeah, looked like, like, a, like it looked like a, a it looked like a car driving with no driver. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I didn't want JD to see me in this old van. And then to make a long story short, <laughs> I told him about it later. He said, "I didn't see that van, I, but I saw him." <laughs> he saw him first. Yeah. And then when 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 the pastor had took me to with him to an uh, an evangelistic meeting. And he said, I want you to get up today and tell people what God has done for you. I just stood up. You know, I didn't have, at that time, I was growing braids. Nobody saw mm. me, but I was growing braids. I, was, I looked totally different. It was like <laughs> Martin. Remember Martin had that yeah, own <laughs> twist in his head? <laughs> and I had this jersey on and I had these jeans and Tim's on. And this was around the time I took all my jewelry and I gave it to like different pastors, gave the the car I had to one of the pastor's wives or something like that. Cause I said, if this is real, then God will rebuild my life. And I ended up with more than I ever had with Puff. Yeah. Wow. But Do when I got up there to speak mm -hmm. and I started saying what God has done for me, I could see like it was like hundreds of people that was just coming down to so this is even before you got in front of a altar yeah. to really No, I, from that I just moment stood then, up you know. in front of a a congregation and said what God did for me. And, and I always had that draw. And I started going around from different cities to speak to youth and tell them how to, you know, process hip hop and things like that. So it wouldn't have them going to jail for stuff that rappers are not even living. Mm. I felt like that was my, my assignment to do that. So even if I go and do some crazy freestyle, I still owe it to those kids that's out there to know that don't actually go out and do this. Right. This is entertainment. This is not mm -hmm. this is not a hundred percent real for nobody. Mm -hmm. And you need to know that because if you put the music out there and somebody start living it, yeah. then they're gonna get their families are gonna be ruined by not having that supervision. So I felt that was my responsibility. Not going against any rap or anything like that, just trying to balance the feel. Yeah, right. Do you understand why some people might view you as a hypocrite? I I do without 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 conversation with me. Mm. I I I one hundred percent agree with that and and understand that when you don't have the conversation. Yeah, right. I think if 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 Denzel goes to church after he did training day and he speaks about God. Is he a hypocrite? No. I think he's an actor. Because it's an art. Right. You don't judge paintings. You enjoy right. them. Right. So when because it comes I mean, to music, it's the stigma that you think is real that gives me the stigma of hypocrite. But once you know this is not real, then he's no longer a hypocrite. Right. So do right? you regret, I guess, some of the verbiage that you said in your book? Cause I read it. And no, I'm if saying. you my uh, according to my according, and that's a great question. I answered that yesterday on Angie. I said that if if I if I said I love Sandy, say a girl named Sandy from high school, and I can never be without her at eighteen, mm -hmm. and then I'm forty years old and I'm living without Sandy, does that make me a hypocrite? No, it just means you grew, right. But you're not applying that same thing to me. You're saying because you said this when you were 20 years old, you're a hypocrite now at 30 and 40 right. and not allowing me to grow. Once right. you allow a person to grow, that could be their truth at that age. And you're responsible. What I'm trying to say is I'm going to live my truth, whatever that is, at whatever age that is. So at that point, that's what I needed to make the transition. So that's that was my mindset. That's no right. longer my mindset. My mindset now is that this is an art. Mm. And if I'm given 12 gifts, I'm responsible to be faithful over all 12 of those gifts. Yeah. Not Did it take you a long time to realize that, that this is yeah, an art? Yeah, it took me a gift. long time because I, I held so many ministers at high regard that I allowed their truth to be my truth. 
And that happens a lot of times because you want to show them that you're serious about this. So I let their truth be my truth. But the more and more I studied, I realized that that's not necessarily what I believe. Mm -hmm. That's what he said, but that's not what I believe. It's almost like Mm -hmm. Malcolm X when he realized that everybody white wasn't against them. Right. And then it changed them. Did that make him a hypocrite? No, he grew. Right. And he recognized this struggle is bigger than just a race thing. It's a mm-hmm. mindset. Did you struggle with that first time of going back to the music? Because, you know, welcome back. You said you tried to do a cleaner image. You felt like you yeah. had to. Was that a struggle even and before that? That was, that? So, that was a problem. Because when I did, what I'm doing now is what I was going to do then. But I took the advice of so many people. And I also did not want to disrespect anybody that had just spent five years with me as a minister and said, okay, I trust this guy. I trust him with my family. I trust him with my children. So I wanted to do something that I felt like they would know that I'm respecting them. But in in respecting them, I didn't respect what I was really supposed to do. I was supposed to do this from back then. And Mm. people would say, well, how would that transition? I feel like I could say it now. You remember... DMX used to get on stage and he would do all of these crazy mm-hmm. yep. songs. But then he would pray. Yeah. Right. And it would be so moving to people because the dopest MCs always had a spiritual sense to them. Mm. Rock Kim, you know, you go mm-hmm. down yeah. the history of them. So people that that argue with that, they don't know hip hop. Mm-hmm. Some it's of always the rooted dopest in, over rappers. the God. It's all rooted in yeah, certain level of that. God yeah. MC. Where yeah. you think you get that from? That's a spiritual term. Mm. When you hear Tupac, why was he so dope? He was mixing lyrics with spirit. That's Kendrick why Lamar to, opens up his album with the prayer. Exactly. J. Cole <laughs> and some of the dopest in depth artists have spirituality to it. Mm. Mm. I hope that makes Welcome sense. Welcome back was hard though. The song was hard, dude. The yeah, first <laughs> and, and no, the and from tough. that, from that, I like I was saying about the DMX thing. I was like, what would happen if I ever learned how to put it all together? Because right now, it's still stuff I got to figure out. I don't. Yeah. The only issue is that I'm growing in front of the masses. Yeah, even at that's this stage always of your a career. hard thing yeah. to do. You know what I'm saying? A child star is the hardest thing. It's to grow in front of the masses because mm. mm. they know you one way and then you're trying to grow and be who you are now. And they're like, no, I know you as yeah. this person, you know, and, and not trying to let you evolve. But mm. you're not going to get the best out of a person if you don't let them evolve. Like the Jay-Z we know today. It's not that man. Yeah. It's <laughs> different right. than it's a man back then. It's not Streets is watching. Yeah, definitely. But he's still great. Yeah. And you take a 50 who sold mm-hmm. crack and mm-hmm. professed it. And then he comes and sell you vitamin water. Yeah. And now he got this amazing TV show. Power, yeah. So why let every other rapper evolve <laughs> into something totally different? Is he a hypocrite? Because now he's selling us vitamin water and he sold us crack? B dot. B dot. Because if you keep it real, you know. Uh, Are you corporate now? Me. No, he's not corporate. He's getting. He's 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 making his money. He's evolved. Th- he's somebody new. With, when it comes to Christianity as a practicing Christian, it's just that it's just a conviction that it's something that you just can't like get out of, you know. Or no, and that's true. Of. I'm not. I'm not trying to get out of it. I'm not trying right. to get out of it. I'm saying the message could still be the same. The method you go about it is changed. Like we're right. not in a CD era. Yeah. We in an MP3 era, so to keep it's living. Streaming era now, yeah. Yeah, we're yeah. in a streaming era, so to try to do something the way you've done it before, is not the same. And I keep getting off my my statement that I'm trying to make. I say, you remember when DMX used to pray on stage and everybody would feel it? Yeah. It was the dope records that he made that had you open to that prayer. Mm. That's true. So what if I gave you dope records and then I prayed? It would be totally mm. different because I'm right. coming from that. I'm not trying to mm. turn the whole world Christian. I'm, I'm trying to do my part. I'm trying to make mm. sure that I use my platform to do something good with it. And I don't look at it as a weakness because I'm undergirded or 
my foundation is God. I think that's a strong place. Is it important for you now to do it on your own terms without an affiliation? Because, you know, mm-hmm. you, like you said, sometimes it was hard for you with Bad Boy because how am I going to be anti something that I really helped build? And yeah. then there were times for your career, it's like, is Mace going to be with G-Unit? Is Mace going to be with Good Music? Mm-hmm. Is Mace going to be with MMG? You know, in this era, do you feel like it's more important for you to build your foundation on your own in a sense? I, I think I think it's really important for me to build my own Bad Boy. Mm. That's always been a goal of mine. Right. Mm-hmm. Like I, yep. I, I wanted it to happen with um Christian and, and um um King Combs. Yeah, I wanted. You said it, you wanted the A and R King Combs yeah, record. Yeah, I wanted to yeah. do that. And that, you didn't really like the way always, Puffy received it in a sense, right? Not that I ain't like the way he received it. He has the right to do what he wants to do, and I have the right to do what I want to do. I think it's beyond how I feel about it. I think at this point, every man has the right to do it the way he wants to do it. Yeah. And I don't feel no way about it. So at this point, that's what, that's one of the things I want to do is build my own bad boy. But you had a label situation with Jermaine Dupree, correct? Mm-hmm. And, then, oh. and the artists went go. They actually right. sold records. <laughs> for the record. And that, for the record. <laughs> for the record. Anything I've been a part of has worked. That's one yeah. thing that is not on my track record. And also, in me meeting Jermaine Dupri, when I met Nelly, that's another thing people sometimes they don't know about. So I think my track record is really oh, good. Oh, because of the coup to love with the cool. Nelly connection? Yeah, people don't realize I that. passed Nelly the coup to love. Mm. Oh, wow. Because I was excellent in music, and I still wanted them to go. Wow. That's why when I came back, Kuda made me the president of the company. Oh yeah, that's Because right. I was the that's one. Right. So I, I got that I got, now. A, I lot, that I got now. a lot of history, a lot of good <laughs> stuff, and a lot of great records. The G Unit era was crazy. Like to, the G Unit era was crazy. What, what was what was that like for you, man? And like, what, why was that milkshake so damn big in the, in the video, man? <laughs> why was that shit so big, man? <laughs> I mean, no disrespect, it, no, my man. no. Pause on that. Pause on all pause that. On that. <laughs> Yeah, that was crazy. But <laughs> I think the the G Unit experience was really good for me because I had a short period of learning about Prodigy, Rest His Soul, oh, and yeah. stuff like that. And mm-hmm. it was it was different, but it was it was more like how I started. Mm. So it was fun because I got to be in that space. No pressure. You know what I'm really saying? Get with it. And even with 50, I think at that time he was so focused on the music and creating an amazing brand. He was trying to help everybody. I think that eventually wore him out a little bit. But everybody on that label, like, received me. Like, mm. to this day, if I see Bank somewhere, it's crazy, but mm. I'll look at him like I would look like anybody mm. from Bad Boy mm. or Tony wow. Yayo. Sure, or yeah, yeah. because at that time you never forget people who was there for you at a transition. Mm. You know what mm. I'm saying? Like they was already running. They ain't have no need to to have me on board with them. So I always respected that. Even when when he felt like he didn't want to do the deal because Puff, you know, mm-hmm. wanted two million, wanted or two million or something like that. Yeah. And they just took me in. I mean, everybody, yeah, yo, and Buck. Me and Buck became really cool. Even Last couple a couple months ago, I saw Buck eat murder. What's up? You know, I got to be murder around him. You know, <laughs> so that was really I like, cool. I think that mixtape's underrated too. Yeah, yeah. He was in your bag on a couple of those. Yeah, like, so, yeah, man, a Robin joint. And the... I really enjoy that. Who kid? If you listening, I still need my money. You never paid me for that. <laughs> so I figured out. You know. I'm you taking, don't say. I'm Who taking can? a lot for the team, you know. That is that is actually up on all the streaming services too. So, it uh, is. Yeah, yeah. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> My attorney will be in touch with you. Who of, he said, ten, <laughs> ten years of hate. And I ain't get the payment in ten years. <laughs> <laughs> you also nah, got busy on the Get Rich or Die soundtrack as well. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, know why yeah. Lou and Fabby the don't say I'm their daddy. Oh, uh, yeah. I can't get that it. Was it was back then. It was back then. Yeah. But you know, to to it was really it was really fun working with them. Yeah. I mean, and even who else? Hove and just Shy Money, yeah. just everybody. Everybody took me in. Yeah, that's yeah. why today when I see Trav, his brother, you know, his mm-hmm. family member, I I feel like I know him because 
his brother was so cool to me and yeah. so good to me. You know what I'm saying? Was it frustrating though to have these sort of stop and goes and like Ace is coming back and then things don't work out and then it seemed like you would yeah, step away a, for a couple of years? A like, lot, it was a lot of paperwork behind the scene. It was a lot of red tape. It was a lot of cease and desist. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you run up to the so radio to station people. on Puff once to try to get a contract yeah, signed and all that. It was a lot of it was a lot of different things that that people never knew about. Mm. They just would see me stop and go. Like I'm like I'm getting like you're unsure. Unsure. Yeah. No, I would see certain things and say, okay, scrap that, go back to the drawing board. Cause like I had the pleasure of speaking to Angie. Mm -hmm. I had the pleasure of speaking to Flex and I said certain things I wouldn't do because I thought you were so in bed with this person and this artist that every time I try to do something, you would try to stop it or mm -hmm. wouldn't support it because of your affiliation with this. And then he would go, no, that ain't the case. But I'm glad you told me that. And I told Angie the same thing. Yeah, yeah. And I said the same thing about Clue. And you can make mm -hmm. all the, you, you get course. where I'm going with of this. Course. So it's like every time you try to do something, I didn't want to break out of a different city. I'm from here. Mm. So it's yeah. not for me to get a jump start from San Diego or, you know, <laughs> somewhere. He I'm, loves San Diego, though. Base yeah. loves San Diego. Yeah, man. <laughs> I I love the town, you know. It yeah. was the first place I could put my crunchy toes in the in the <laughs> sand and chill. I come out with basketball shorts, t shirt, <laughs> and say, "What's up, dude?" You know. <laughs> so, I know you say you like to be celebrated, right? Yeah. And I know recently you celebrated twenty years of Harlem World. What memories do you have when you was making that project, like? And, and they view it a classic now, Mace. They view the album as a classic, classic, baby. We didn't give it to you in real time. I apologize, but yeah. history's been kind and said it's a classic. It's a classic. Say Elliot and everybody got it wrong, man. It's a classic. It's a classic. Why they say you got it wrong? Because I don't think in that era we didn't get we didn't make it we didn't give it that classic stamp in real time. Oh, that was you yeah. back then? Nah, man. Nah, 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 nah. Everybody involved, Elliot. Everybody <laughs> Everybody can change their mind, right, Elliot? Come on. Hey, but time time is what yeah, tells you, it, man. Time is back, what tells it. If you go back to the source. I needed my other mic. <laughs> I needed my other mic. I think they gave me four. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I probably did. See, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was really looking forward to that fifth mic. Yeah. Wow. I was really well, looking forward to that. Was that my era? I got really think. Was yeah, that my era? Yeah, yeah, that's you. That's you. <laughs> that that's you. And uh, Jim yeah. Jones' voice. Is that you, Elliot? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you got to admit, is that you, Beffa, is classic? Yeah, Come that's on, classic. that's amazing. Yeah. And he it's... said it with an F, too. Is that you, Beffa? <laughs> <laughs> no, but but the making of Harlem World. What was that like? So then you, so you, so basically, Biggie dies. Life at the Depths of Smash. You help Puff with No Way Out. That blows up, and now it's really finally your turn. What was that like putting Harlem World together? Harlem World was it was an amazing like creative space, and that's how it is for me. That's why I'm trying to get away from certain things because when I'm happy and I'm smiling. I could make that kind of music. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I could give you what you're getting now, but I could still give you the hits if I'm in a good space. When I'm not in a good space, that's just how I work. Mm -hmm. If I'm in a good space, I could give you that repeatedly every time. You know, and when I was doing Harlem World, I had a different group of people around me. Mm -hmm. I had Blinky with me, I had Dre Dega with me, you know, um, Tone from Track Masters? Um, Wanna Blow. Oh, yeah. Um, Tone oh, Wanna and Blow. I, you know, I had yeah. Tone with me. Tone was my manager at that time when me and Kuda fell out and, mm. and things like that. So I was just in a space where it was just me, D Dot, Nashim, Stevie J. It was the hitman. Yeah. Right. Like to this day, I'm still calling D Dot. I still look to D Dot and say, okay, D Dot, you tell me about this freestyle. I don't judge I don't I don't trust everybody's ear. Yeah. Cause everybody right. hears for different reasons. Mm. I called D Dot, I spit the verse for him over the phone. The Oracle joint? Or I even think it was that or something else. And he was like, That's you rapping. Mm. I say, Yeah, I'm rapping. So when you produce for me, I need those kind of beats. And that's kind of why I went over the beats I did. Mm -hmm. Because it seemed like producers are not making that kind of music. Yeah. So every mm. time I would get an inbox of beats. Yeah, I would have to go, 
I'm too much this, you know what I'm saying? I'll have to rap <laughs> the bounce, like, yeah, yeah. I'll have to go in, the, in that bag. <laughs> <laughs> so you chose Blueprint 2, the Jay-Z record, yeah. and, and the UFO, the classic breakbeat. Yeah, and I and a lot of people have their opinions, but I don't trust everybody's opinion. Like yeah. you, I trust your opinion. Of course. I would trust... Um, B-Dot, who's out here making sure you... B-Dot. Number two <laughs> no, on the bad boy top Ooh. MCs list. <laughs> What so what is it? Well, no, we get to that. Do Biggie think- would put me number two. Mm. Mm. You want a sound bite? There you have it. Biggie would put me number two. How competitive was it like during that era with you guys? Um, but after I after I left, Biggie might put Kiss a little bit ahead of me. But Kiss has done more in that. Yeah, sense. but at that time, Biggie would put me So putting two. you above Styles for the record isn't a diss because we all respect Styles, no, but I, we I, feel you're above Styles. Let me styles. tell you something. When I say Kiss, I mean Kiss and Styles. Mm. I think mm. Styles is is right there. Is no is You could argue that if you want, but I'm going to let you have that ignorant conversation by yourself. Yeah, yeah. Because Styles is right but there. It's, but it, no disrespect to them, it's disrespectful to put a Black Rob or a G'd up above you. But Charlemagne did that. So Uh-oh. so how much of it, B-Dot's contention is that it's personal with you and Charlemagne. Why, but, are you, why are you and Charlemagne? Why do you have beef with the radio guy? Like, why is there a conflict there? Um, because like, in, my, in my bad judgment, I have times when I'm, I'm very human, then I have times when I could be very brilliant. I think everybody have dumb moments, you know what I'm saying? I believe he gave me Dunk the other day for that. And it was deserving, because I, I, I ran up on him with, the, with a different intent. You this know what I'm saying? the Revolt Conference and all that, yeah. yeah. And I think that, that kind of helped him build a, the perception. He already had a bad perception. Of me, but I think that kind of sealed it for him. And yeah. sometimes you make decisions and in your decisions, you don't get to pick your consequence. So I'm okay with that. Yeah. Right. Is, so you, is there something you want? You feel one day would be rectified or it's not important to you? Um, I don't think, if I thought it would help, I would apologize. But I don't, if, if it doesn't help, then there's no need in doing it. Yeah. Right. But I'll do it anyway just for the sake yeah. of saying I did my part. But for a peaceful man, you've gotten yeah, to I, some altercations <laughs> through the years. It's been... The situations for Mr. But Beth. my 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 altercations always come as a defense of something. Mm. I'm never the guy pushing the envelope. I'm just always defending myself. Like if you take this platform, Elliot Wilson, and you to, and you choose to zoom in on Little Pump and destroy Little Pump's career with this platform, that would be the that would be a a misappropriation of this of power, platform. Yeah. Because you're taking your power and you're using it to bully somebody because you're on the air every day. If I'm on the air every day, I could change people's view of you by just constantly going after you. It's it's bullying Mm -hmm. in the highest form, you know? So people got to watch how they, in in society today, you can't keep doing that. Mm -hmm. If somebody chooses to call you on the carpet on that, it it may cost you your job. Mm -hmm. You don't get to stay on somebody like that. Because you got affiliations with people that may not like this person. That's not why you was given this platform. Mm-hmm. You was given this platform to talk about Try to be music. Fair. Yeah. And even if you don't like me, that's cool. Mm-hmm. You have the right to say, that was trash. Yeah. I would have the right to yeah. say that's trash. But to hop on you every chance I get, it's not your job. Yeah. Right. That's not why the sponsors right. put Mace, their money wanna... behind you. Mm-hmm. Is that I I was fair gonna... to say? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just want to say I want to go back a little bit with Harlem World. Yeah, let's go. Those sessions, uh, twenty four hours to live. Like, was that session Ooh. all Ooh. together? With you we gonna talk about that song. Yeah, like, and one day I think we need to go through every record. <laughs> let's, go was... through some. let's go. Yeah, let's some. go. Let's go. Let's go. It's been twenty. It's been twenty, what? right? When I I got the idea, twenty four hours to live from Bismarcky. Mm. Bismarck. See. Bismarck saw me in the front of Mark 125. He said, yeah, I hear what you're doing. And I, as soon as he came up, I went, "No, you know, nobody <laughs> beat the dead. You know, as Harlem, we all got humor. We all yeah. can make you cry if we want to joke. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, nobody doing the biz beat dance, the doing biz. The biz dance. And he was like, chill, chill for a moment. <laughs> the, the actual records that you're doing, they're dope. They're cool. But I think you need to make a record. 
about if you had 24 hours to live. This Marky wow. says this. Yeah, in front of Mark 125. And so I owe Biz. I owe Biz. Wow. Not just homage or check. Yeah. I hate when people try to pay me homage. Pay me a check. You took a <laughs> lot of bars from me. <laughs> <laughs> well, since your idea to have the locks and Black Rob on it? Yeah, channel, yeah, because when I did 24 Hours to Live, all I could come up with was 16 bars. or So I was like, man, how do we make this a dope record? And then I just, I told Puff the hook. I said, Puff, you should say the hook. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I didn't tell Puff. Puff just bogarted his way. Of course. Way. <laughs> you know, Puff going to be on every record that's hot. If it's hot, he's on it. If it's yeah. not... Y'all go ahead and handle that. Speaking of when <laughs> Puff was on, looking at me. Did he, did yeah. you get a Grammy for that or Grammy nominated for that? Yeah. That's a young Pharrell on production too, yeah. right? Yeah, and I remember yeah. when we met Pharrell, everybody was like, don't let him in the studio because he was dressed different. <laughs> <laughs> you know, back in them days, you couldn't come in the studio like that. Right. You come in the studio it's with some Kanye. jeans and all that. <laughs> this is pre-Kanye. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Is he wearing a kilt? He can't get Yeah, no they're like, what? <laughs> they're like, man, you got this dude in the studio. I said, this record is fire. I don't care what y'all are talking about. <laughs> and then he played the record, and he's like, why are you over there looking at me? Why my girl standing there? And the drums came in. Mm. Dun, 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 oh, so he had the hook dun, placement, dun. too. He had the Yeah, yeah Pharrell yeah. came up with yeah. the hook. It was yeah. already on it. Wow. I was like, I'm gonna do the hook. But you also have DMX on all of them twice. I'm sensing a pattern here, right? You're sensing a pattern. I'm gonna be on this one. This, this is the one. And I, I, I remember I spit a freestyle, the freestyle I did on Flex when it was me, mm. Biggie, and the mm. locks. Mm -hmm. The locks. I'm I remember about that, yeah. the. I, I had a thousand dollar bill when it was Teddy Roosevelt's, and Puff heard that he was like, "Woo!" Then we came back. He was like, "That need to be on a record." And that's how we mm. came up with How Many That'll Die For You. Mm. And then wow. we just threw Little Kim on it, yeah. and I wrote Puff another verse. And Did and you know right away that you want to feel so good because of Cool in the Gang sample? Like back no, then, you guys caught a lot, of, no. caught a lot of heat for taking no. popular records and sampling them in that. No, era, right? I fought. Listen, can you imagine being in the beat room? They're playing on a <laughs> dat, and they play Benjamin's. <laughs> boom, boom, no, 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 no. Right? Mm. And then they play. And they play hypnotize. Wow. And then they play. And you like, I hope that's not my beat. I hope one of the first two is my beat. I'm not taking that last beat. And I said, um, Puff, I, I like the first beat. <laughs> the Benjamin. He's like, um, you know, Puff looks sideways. You already know. I know him so well. As soon as yeah. he looks sideways, I know. He like, um, that beat, that's my beat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I said, what about the other beat? Oh, that's Biggie's beat. You couldn't argue with that. That's Biggie's yeah, yeah, yeah. beat. But I'm saying that, the first beat. If Biggie got the second one, I need the first one. You just thought because it was cool in the game, people knew what it was. It was just... A no, too over the top. and I was like, I didn't think that was what I wanted. Cause yeah. remember, I went and wrote um, "Mo Money, Mo Problems" as my first single. Mm. Mm. So I'm a thinking, lot of people don't know that. Obviously. Yeah, I'm yeah. thinking that's my first single. I already got it, and and Jada Dying Kiss was supposed to be and... on it. Mm. It was gonna be me, Jada Kiss, and Biggie mm. for my single. Lead single, number one single, yeah. like first single. Yeah, you get what I'm saying? So, And then Pop was like, um, you know, since Biggie died, we're we going to use this record. Now, you you heard what he said first, right? Since Biggie died. Oh, so that decision was made after Biggie passed. Yeah, so if you notice, Biggie is not on the same beat we're on. Mm. Mm -mm. Oh, that's Benjamin's, you mean? Benjamin's, No. Okay. No, more money, more problems. Okay. More money, more problems. Yeah. Is it the same beat? No, it's the same beat on that it's one. It's the same yeah, beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, either way, Big yeah. had put a verse on it. Yeah. Forgive me. Not for you. And and he was supposed to he yeah. was supposed to be on the beat, and it was going to yeah. be me, Kiss, and Biggie. And then you ended up writing mm. Puffy's part. Yeah. Because yeah. Puff has yeah. already got in mind. He got, he got yeah. another plan. Yeah. But you guys, if it's Biggie's record, it was all in service to Biggie. If it's for Biggie, yeah. you have to accept that yeah. at the end of the day. 
Right. You mm-hmm. not if it's your song. I didn't have to, but yeah, I went along to. with it. I chose yeah. to go along with it. So how did you make right. feel so good yours? And when did you ever? When did you start feeling good about it? That when you I didn't. I wrote it to another beat because mm. I didn't like the beat at all at first because it wasn't finished. It just had na 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 See, it doesn't sound like the way you hear it now. Before it had the party people and the place to be, he jazzed it all up because, you know, I didn't like it at first. The big intro, the big intro, yeah. Yeah. But it was just... But when they added the big intro, is that when you felt like all this... No, I had already had... I wrote it to the... I wrote it and put it over... Dun, 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 and then Puff produced it around that. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. What was the other hit? What you so, want? That was total. That was that tell was me a what you one. want. But remember, if you look at you listen to these beats before the record, there wouldn't have been the beats that you picked. Remember, you had whoa, you had um, mm. if you wow. think I'm jiggy, all these crazy beats, yeah. and it seemed like whatever was the softest <laughs> beat. Get at, the <laughs> get at the maze, and I was yeah. like, "Man, when I'm in my whole career, I never had a Benjamins." Mm. Mm. So I had to be a lyrical. beat that might have been as big as you, or you had. Yeah, to open I always the made the beat. Yeah, mm. finding the pocket there's, of it. There's no beat other than I would say, "Tell me what you want." In my perspective, that was just crazy. You Anybody, know, another MC could have yeah, wanted like that beat. When you this heard way, yeah. such a vibrant thing. The beat was already crazy. Right. When you heard Bust Around, dun, 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 put your hands on, I can see. Right? In my whole career, I never had that. So then, right. how was I able to do it? It had to be the lyrics because that wasn't there. Yeah. Mace, was it your call to have DMX on the album twice? Mm, I think was that DM was D. I think that was D. Okay. D perspective because, and why? Because DMX was so hot in the streets. We all knew. DMX was going to be as big as he was. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I was going up to Yonkers rapping with the locks every day. So we knew DMX was going to be yeah. super, super dope. So having him having him on the first record, once he got on um 24 Hours to Live, it was like he wanted to work. He yeah. was he was a worker. You know what I'm saying? Mm. There's some rappers, they're not workers. He was one of the right. workers. Like, how many songs you want to do? Yeah. We only gonna do two. He would have done four or five. Yeah. He would ready. He yeah. You got another one. <laughs> <laughs> you know? what, what were you? Some of your contributions to what are your contributions to No Way Out that maybe some people may not know or give you full credit for when you listen to that album. Um, I think I was as involved as Puff was. Yeah. Mm. I mean, the all the lead singles been around the world. Been around the world remix. Yeah. Can't nobody hold me down. Yeah. All those, all the big records were mine. Yeah, that I mean, I wrote. Yeah. So when you look at even even from the aspect of, I don't think there's many rappers that could say they were um, songwriter of the year for two years straight. For the mm. time I was in hip hop, I was the songwriter of the year. Yeah. With right. everybody being there, so I think that equates to something. Right, that's a great contribution in hip hop. What's your process now writing songs? Do you like pen the pad? Like how do you, how? Um, what's your process? You lay it, just lay it, it down. It depends on the beat. When it's aggressive, I like to go off the top of my head. When it's like party or like a girl record, I kind of try to write it. Yeah. So like a song like niggas done started something. What was the process <laughs> like for that? Just off the top. Off the top. Mm-hmm. Were you guys all together when you recorded that? I think we were for that because that was Dame Grease. Dame Grease, yeah. he contributed. And sometimes it's too many people to name. Like whenever there's something really <laughs> dope, it's just it's just a lot goes into yeah. it. Sometimes people think just Puff or Puff and the Hitman. No, Dame Grease was involved. Pharrell was involved. Young Kanye was involved. You yeah. know, yeah. Like yeah, Jay Z was involved. Yeah. You know, Jay Z right. was on the song with Cheat, Cheat on, on you. you. Cheat on you, yeah. Cheat on you. So Monifa was on that album. Um, I love to be. Need to be. It's a great. Song. Yeah, like <laughs> it's one of Vidas classics, baby. Yeah, it's a, it's a whole album. New wow. Edition was involved. You know, <laughs> jealous guy. Jealous guys. Was, yeah, Eight Ball, MJG, Suave House yeah. was involved. It right. was so many people involved in that. It was that was just like it was just great. So many people contributed, mm-hmm. but it didn't this, overshadow. 
me. There's a this footage just online of you in Harlem World embracing a young Kanye West. What was it about him that you like gravitated to? Um, when I when I met Kanye, I told him to keep rapping because I saw his passion, like something something in Even life. Then. Yeah, something in life that people underestimate is a man's will to be great. Like mm-hmm. you could have the talent, but you that's that not you that's that not necessarily what's gonna make it real. When mm-hmm. I saw Kanye, I saw his willing to be great for a long time. Some mm-hmm. people are gonna be great until they get a watch and a chain. Some people are gonna be great until they get a house and move out the hood. Mm-hmm. Very few people want to be great for a long time. Stay driven. And stay I saw driven. that in him. Like, I I think I have that because for us to even be here 22 years later, mm. that's that's and a testament care. in this yeah. sense that we're on every major platform after 20 years. Yes, sir. That's... Mm. Yeah, that you shook up the internet. You you won a rap battle in 2017 in the judgment of, yeah, of the so hip hop audience. I, I always tell people the thing you're actually using against me is more detrimental to everybody else. Because if you say that's what I'm, I am, and they can't beat me, then what does that say about them? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's amazing, man. Mace, what's up? With- I think I got. Oh, yeah. I think I got a few more coming though. Oh. Yeah. What you mean? A few more what? A few more a few more incidents with rappers. I think he was just the first one. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna bring it to Lil Pump, man? Leave Lil Pump alone, man. No, I'm not that. I'm not I'm not talking about going after somebody. I just I just could sense it. I think I think it's a bucket list. You know, you check off your bucket list. Mm. There's one down, it's gonna be probably about two more and then my legacy will be where it need to be because you you saw it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's unfinished said, business. Unfinished business. Unfinished so. business. You said that you was coming out with an album a couple years ago called Now We Even. Is that still happening? Oh, it's done. I could play it for you now. <laughs> <laughs> it's all done. Oh, wow. Is that gonna be the return? Or that's just something that was that's a lost album. I don't know. I I'm yeah. I'm looking to see how how I have so much music. I think I have like hundreds of songs, but not hundreds, but at yeah. least a hundred songs. And sometime the process, I think what I've I think I kinda been overthinking it. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes when you have so much stuff, you don't know which record to go with. Because mm-hmm. everybody, because of their, their, have their ability, own favorites. Yeah. They'll be like this. Like every time I drop something, people will be like, I like that or I don't like it. Cause they know of so much of the stuff that I have. Yeah. So Sometime I'm trying to get D Dot and a few people like yourself and people to go through it and be like, I like this, so I like this verse because it's timeless. Yeah, yeah, I want, I want that hands down classic. But is it hard mm-hmm. though? Because I mean, as, as sharp as you are, you're obviously not in the prime of your career, right? You say you're 20 mm-hmm. year veteran. You know, there's still an age stigma in hip hop. Like, do you feel like? No, nah, I don't think that 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 goes with me because I've been absent so long. So even though it's been 22 years, I only really gave us like two or three albums. So. Exactly. So to a lot of people there, people still want to hear me because they didn't get to hear that. Mm-hmm. So I'm just trying to give them the whole campaign of Now We Even is like giving them all of the stuff they missed out on and also going to the orphanages and things like that and just doing a whole campaign of touching people musically, spiritually, all of that, helping the inner city. So that's your biggest that challenge, to, to combine all those elements of it. Yeah, right? You're and, not and turning having, your back on spirituality yeah, side a, of you. You're yeah, trying to combine both team, things. Having a team that had the capacity to be able to help me do that. You get what I'm saying? So now I've learned I can't use everybody for everything. Some people I could use for music. Then I got to have another team that helped me do the spiritual thing. Then I got to have another team That'll help me do the nonprofit stuff, like giving out turkeys and things like that. And people who want to profit all the time, they're not going to be good for nonprofit. Mm -hmm. So it's like having three teams working at the same time. So this whole thing of the times Mace comes up, shakes up the world and goes away. You're not going away this time. We're we're dealing with Mace in in 20... 
17 going 18. into 2018. I'm in 2018. My brain is in 2018. <laughs> 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 and hopefully by the time that starts, I'll be in 2019. Does Oracle's success give you that extra validation if you needed it to feel like this is the right move for me right now? This is for me to reclaim my spot in this music business? I'm not I'm not trying to reclaim my spot. Mm. I'm trying to go for it all. Mm. Mm. I'm not trying to fulfill get, your destiny almost. Yeah, in I'm a not. Sense. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. Fulfill my destiny. I'm not trying to get 97. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to get where I'm supposed to be right now in 2017 when I look at my peers and I see all the great things they have done. Yeah. I don't get jealous. I get motivated. I feel mm-hmm. like I'm supposed to be up there. Like I could make a million dollars, but I feel like I'm supposed to be at least 100 million. Mm-hmm. Somewhere wild up there, not down here with the one and two million. Mm-hmm. I don't think right. I think that's beneath me. Yeah, for everything I know and everything I could do. Absolutely. And does does things like seeing a Jay Z still successful? Older rappers now, like it does. Like it used to be that the stigma that older artists couldn't really like compete in the marketplace, mm-hmm. and it was just a young. Man's game. Does that inspire you to see like wow yeah, hip hop audience does. has grown? We've grown up in hip hop. Definitely hip-hop. has. And and I've learned and I had a smart conversation with different people that have said, Mace, you don't even have to go after the younger crowd. If you just get your fans, <laughs> you'll do well. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'm I'm no longer trying to run away from my fans to get newer fans. Yeah. I'm just trying to be who I am and whoever like that. That's, connects to it, connects to it. That, that's right. who connect to it. I feel good. Beat out, you got any final Word. words, man? I feel Woo! good that Beth is back, baby. I'm feeling so good, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's dope because like, even when I spoke to Loon. You guys are good? You guys yeah, are good? Yeah, we was, we was on the phone. We've been on the phone a lot, especially since this whole mm-hmm. thing that happened with me and um, um Kim. I... Just just understanding that I have a multi-responsibility. I have to be dope as an artist, but I also have to give back. And I also have to be at these places that are not necessarily in my benefit only. So I got to do it all. That's why the campaign is Now We Even. I feel like there are some things I could have done better and more people I could have helped. So that's what this campaign is yeah. about. That's why it's called Now We Even. After I do this, we're even. I, right. That's why I did Angie first. I promised her something a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Now me and Angie is even. Right. Um, we went through the thing with Puff. Now he paid me my money. Now we're even. Mm-hmm. It's about getting even and a positive. If I owe you something, it's time to make that right. Yeah. Right. Mace, why do you think that a lot out. of the bad boy artists have gone to like religion? Like you came a past them. Bad boy is oh. just a crazy environment, man. It's just <laughs> it's being on bad boy is like playing for um what's the guy name in Indiana? Bobby Knight. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be good, but you may be crazy afterwards. <laughs> I know Kurt Beck wasn't involved with the tour. Did you try to convince him to come on there at any point? I never, I've never spoken to Craig Mack ever in my whole life. Oh, wow. Okay. If it never. And I know. Yeah. And I know. I know you said at one time the NFL approached you when you're speaking about sports to be their chaplain. Yeah, like, and even today, there's people that reach out to me to be a chaplain, even in in the NBA, because they understand. That I understand the pressures of being a young, a younger celebrity, and also trying to balance doing right with what you think your image should be. So mm. I think a lot of times you get millions of dollars, but you don't know how to live. That's going to end up being a problem. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people reach out for me with that. I'm just trying to figure out how to put it all together. Right. And you, so right. you, you, you need to secure a whole new record contract situation that's currently where you're at right now to get this vision out? No. Okay. No, I don't need a deal to do it. I, I pretty much know all of the pieces that go into making a dope record and getting it out there. Yeah. I mean, if I have the, the people that, the people that the labels um, pretty much outsource everything to, I already know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, to sign with a label, they would really have to 
do something that's just astronomical. Right. So you're more determined to do it now that you're independent and have your freedom yeah. to, to do it on your way, on yeah. your own terms. On my own terms, my own time. Right. That way, I, if I want to drop the night, I could drop the night. Right. <laughs> you don't need no label. By the way, Wi-Fi, mate. I might <laughs> drop the night. <laughs> you get where my mind is at? That's a, I like that feeling of control to be able to do what I see. I feel like so long my vision hasn't gotten out there. I've supported everybody else's vision. Enhance their vision. And Good. enhance their vision, yeah. but it's time to do my own. Right. And I learned a lot watching, you know, even Jay-Z make that decision yeah. of who he goes with and who he doesn't go with. That was that was the biggest turning point. What do you mean? In what sense? Like, when people go to the next level, they normally go to um, a higher place with a higher circle. Mm. It's not it's not always with the person you started with. Mm. Mm-hmm. To mean transitioning out of Rockefeller in that sense. Yeah. Sometimes to do new things, you need a new circle. Mm. Okay. So I appreciate what everybody has done for me thus far, but it's time for me to go to a new space. Okay. Well, we're going to be there with you, Mace. Yeah. Hey, say it, man. Back to baby. <laughs> so we got to do this again, man. That's yeah. what we say, man. We got to do part two. <laughs> part Absolutely. two, we got to go through the records. And <laughs> part two, we got to go through Harlem World and really dissect it. I'm still I'm with it. Hey. All right, Mace. Thank you, brother, for coming by, man. Peace Appreciate out. It. Follow yeah. me, RSVP Mace. Yeah, Rap Radar Podcast. <laughs> yeah, B Dot. Yeah. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> <laughs>